Now listen to Paul as he begins speaking to this man. He says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Now, he has a man that will understand what he's talking about. Not only an intelligent man, but a man that has a background, and a real background, after all, he probably knew the Mosaic system as well as anyone could that was on the outside. Paul now rejoiced in this opportunity of speaking to a man who was instructed and who'd understand the nature of his case. And Paul likewise knew the law. He'd met Christ. The law was flooded with a new meaning for him. And the soul of Saul was flooded with a new light. And Christ now was the end of the law for righteousness. What God demanded, he now supplied. And God was good. And through Christ, God was gracious. And Paul wanted King Agrippa to know about that. There is a consummate passion filling the soul of the apostle as he speaks. I think this is his masterpiece. I think that his message on Mars Hill is great, but I do not think it compares to this one at all. Now, will you notice here, as this man begins to speak to this man here, he says, I know that you're an expert in all the customs and questions which are among my people. Wherefore, I beseech thee, hear me patiently. Now he begins, and he gives the background. May I say that this is something that is tremendous. And listen to it. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews. Now he says... I'm well known in Jerusalem. My life from the beginning is well known to these folk. Paul wasn't an unknown by any means. Paul was outstanding from the very beginning. Apparently a graduate of the school in Tarsus, the greatest Greek university of the day was there. And Paul defended that city. He says, Tarsus is no mean city. It's an outstanding city. That's the center of Greek culture of that day. And this man had been in the school of Gamaliel. May I say to you, what a picture we have here. 1900 years has not precluded this question as unreasonable here that is raised. The question of what is the way. And there's going to be another great courtroom scene. There's going to be another throne. And Jesus Christ will be on that throne. And you're going to stand there, every one of you that's listening to me today. Somebody says, wait a minute. That's the great white throne you're talking about. Yes, I'm talking about the great white throne. And somebody says, I'm saved. Oh, you are? Then you won't be there. Because Christ bore the judgment of that throne for you. And as we said the other day, your sins are either on Christ, who died for you 1,900 years ago. They're in the back. They are as far as the east is from the west today. He's removed them from you. You'll never come into the judgment for sin. You will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. But I'm talking now to any that have not yet accepted Christ. Well, you will have to come before him for judgment someday. And you'll stand there before a man who died for you with nail prints in his hands, who's been raised from the dead, and you'll be raised from the dead for this judgment. Now, these are important issues. These are eternal verities that are being discussed here before King Agrippa. King Agrippa is being given the great opportunity of his life, for there is the throne above his throne. There is a judgment above the judgment of this man, King Agrippa. And Paul is pointing to that throne, and Paul is pointing to the one who died for King Agrippa and would save him if he'd turned to him. What a dramatic scene we have here. 